There's been a lot of talk recently in this country about what we do about gun violence. Uh, you have a lot of people pretty much on one side saying, uh, we need to do something about the gun. We have people on the other side of the argument saying, no, we don't need more gun laws. What we need to do is something about these darn video games, these violent movies, and we need to do something about the mental health system because it's the crazy people that are doing these mass shootings. I think both sides are missing the main part of the argument that we really should be looking at as a cause of our problem, and that's the war on drugs that's been going on for the last 40 years or so. Uh, to really talk about this, I think we need to admit one or two things, and one is that uh, when it comes to gun violence in this country, it is largely an inner city problem and largely a minority problem. Uh, it's not kosher to say that, it's not politically correct maybe, uh, but it's pretty true. There's been a lot of talk recently about Chicago uh, having the toughest gun laws in the country yet the highest murder rate. Uh, I live near Rochester, New York. It's similar here. We have very tough gun laws in New York, and yet this uh, medium-sized city, Rochester, New York, has one of the highest murder rates in the country. And it's largely inner city, uh, minority uh, perpetrators and victims. Uh, you know, they're not having these kind of gun violence problems in the upscale white suburbs. It is largely an inner city problem. And we have to ask ourselves, how did we get to this point? Uh, we also have to look at what is, quite frankly, happened to the family, inner city families and minority families. Uh, when you have a situation, again, in Rochester, near where I live, uh, I've heard that 75% of uh, African American children get born out of wedlock in that city. That's an astounding number, and that gets at really at the root of the problem here. Uh, when you have two, three generations where uh, young men primarily are raised without the guidance of a father uh, and the expectations of how a young man should behave, Something's going to fill that void, and, and oftentimes it becomes gangs, uh, which leads to more criminal activity and uh, violence. Uh, I'm a criminal defense attorney as well as an author, and I've seen this firsthand. Uh, so really, you know, going back to this, this issue of the broken families, uh, again, what is the cause of that? Well, we have a couple things. Uh, people on the right would say, well, it's the war on poverty, or as the, they would call it, the attack of the family, where you have you know the welfare state is stepping in to uh, you know take the place of the father figure in the, in the family structure, and there may be some truth to that. And I think there probably is, but that's not really the main ingredient as far as I can see. I'm I'm a solid right winger, but I think there's something else we need to look at that's really not that comfortable for people on the right to look at, and that's this war on drugs in, in more precisely the resulting mass incarceration of young African American and Latino men. Uh, this war on drugs is not falling the hardest on uh, the upscale uh, uh, suburbs, as I said before. It is falling on the minorities in the inner cities. And what you have is a very high percentage of young men incarcerated and saddled for the rest of their lives with a felony record. Uh, if you want to look at this issue, I'd suggest you on YouTube here, uh, you know, go to the search box and type in Michelle Alexander Incarceration Nation, and you can listen to one of any number of talks given uh, by Michelle Alexander, a law school professor. She's one of those crazy ACLU liberal types. You know, she and I are diametrically opposed politically, uh, but that doesn't keep her from being right on this issue, and I think she is. Now, I think we're really in our second, maybe third generation of of going through this war on drugs and the effects it's had on minority inner city families, and it's, it's beginning to take its toll. Uh, you know, having one generation where a large percentage of the young men are incarcerated and rendered unemployable by a felony record, you know, that's bad enough, but you know, you get two, three generations of it, and you get a cumulative effect, uh, and you get a point where when young men, when they're at a time of their life, early to mid-twenties when they should be thinking about settling down and getting a good solid job and raising a family uh, where well, they can't do that. They're either incarcerated or they have a record uh, and are rendered unemployable. So what do they have to do? They have to you know, rely on the government to support them and oftentimes with the resulting of these uh, uh, drug convictions they, they can't even get government assistance uh, so they often turn again to a life of crime and you have this vicious cycle. And this is where the violence comes from. 
we've had this type of violence before in this country. Uh, if you look back to the 20s uh, and early 30s, uh, and that's prohibition. You know, we've been through this. Somebody thought it was a good idea to ban uh, the sale and consumption of alcohol, and what resulted was just a bloodbath. The Al Capones of the world stepped in, and we had violence on a huge scale. But we're seeing that again, and it is largely due to this war on drugs. Uh, so, you know, this isn't meant to be a long expose on this, uh, but, you know, the question remains, how are we going to fix it? Well, I don't know if we are, because it's going to take some courage. It's going to take some political courage, which I think is in very short supply. Because somebody's going to have to say, wait, we got to stop it. we got to either legalize drugs or decriminalize them or do something so we're not throwing you know, hundreds of thousands of young black men in prison every single year uh, and, and condemn them to a life of, of uselessness. Uh, and I don't know if we've got the stomach for that. Uh, it's very easy to point at guns and say, well, let's do something about those nasty assault rifles. It's very hard to actually go and fix the problem and I'm not sure we're going to do it, quite frankly. Either we're going to deal with this, or sometime in my lifetime or my children's lifetime, this is going to come to a head, and we're going to have social upheaval that's going to make the 1960s seem like a picnic. Uh, I hope it's not the latter. We'll see. Until next time, LasquatchCamp.com. Thank you.